Before jumping into the meat and potatoes of this video, let me first give you a quick background check on my relationship with Alan Wake. If you want to skip to the actual review, just click on the timestamps below. So when I was in 5th grade, I started to realize that I wanted to become a filmmaker or a writer. Basically, I knew I wanted to create worlds for people to enjoy and tell stories within those worlds. I also realized that I loved horror and that it was most likely my favorite genre. Ghosts, creatures, creepy houses, unsolved mysteries, that was my jam. So that's why I started writing stories of my own, hoping I could one day turn them into films. So when Alan Wake was first announced back in 2005, I was immediately hooked. I mean, an open world game set in a mysterious small town in which you get to investigate supernatural events as a writer whose story is magically coming to life. Yeah, you bet I was excited for this. I felt like they had made that game specifically for me. And that's when my obsession started. An obsession that lasted years. If you were to ask my high school friends what was constantly on the tip of my tongue back then, they would say Alan Wake. I couldn't stop talking about it and thinking about it. It was a disease. I even wrote a couple of short stories set in Bright Falls, the fictional town in which Alan Wake takes place. And all of this before the game even came out. Flash forward to 2010, the game finally released. And unfortunately, Remedy had to scrap their original open world vision to focus on a more linear experience. Even though I was pretty disappointed in that fact, I still thought the game was great. But the game finished with a crazy cliffhanger and even with its two DLCs, a lot of questions were left unanswered. But then Alan Wake disappeared. He came back two years later with American Nightmare, but that was like a weird spin-off thing. After 2012, Alan truly vanished, only to be relinquished to easter eggs and funny little references in other Remedy games. Now flash forward to 2019, Remedy releases Control, a game about a mysterious bureau gathering information surrounding unexplained events throughout the world. I really enjoyed my time with this game. Even though you could tell the game had a smaller budget than their previous titles, I thought it featured one of the best combat loops in years. Alternating between gunfights, telekinesis, and levitation was just so damn fun. The game also had some of the best world building and lore in recent memory. The universe Remedy created was just fascinating to me. And then I found this. I used to know where fiction ends and reality begins. At that point, my inner teenager rose from the dead and took control of my body. I was like a young girl at a Justin Bieber concert. I also started to find pieces of paper directly referencing the Bright Falls incident and Alan Wake himself. Alan Wake, my guy. And then Remedy dropped a bomb a couple of weeks ago. A crossover expansion for Control, featuring Alan motherfucking Wake, called AWE therefore introducing the Remedy Connected Universe. So, how is it? Does it answer the questions I desperately wanted answers for 10 years ago? Let's find out. Let me first give you a quick rundown of the context in which this DLC takes place. I'm going to dive deep into the story in a couple of minutes, but I won't detail every single element of the lore, so in order to understand any of it, you must have played Control and Alan Wake. In AWE, Alan Wake, a writer who's gone missing after being involved in the Bright Falls Altered World event, reveals to Jesse through the Yachtline, this line of communication that connects to other planes and realities, the existence of the investigation sector, a place that was locked away to prevent some type of evil from getting out of it. If you love the original Control, you'll feel right at home. The expansion features the same thrilling gunfights but also takes a turn for a more moodier tone. The exploration of this new sector is also done in a similar fashion. You have this semi-open world full of secrets, hidden passages, shortcuts to unlock, and things to read. A lot of things to read. If you're the type of person who hates reading in video games, skip this one. I was very happy to see that Remedy not only references Alan Wake through the story, but also through the gameplay. Yes, the darkness is back. It has invaded the bureau and Jesse has to use different light sources just like Wake, in order to unlock certain paths and fight our way through particular sections, especially boss fights. Aside from the main quest, you have some side missions you can tackle too, but these are really lackluster, to be honest. You've got some cleaning missions for Ati, the janitor, at some point you must mail letters, and there's some type of pretty basic challenge rooms through these arcades you find. 
Those were really disappointing because the game presents these arcades as objects of power, able to alter the reality of anyone who touches them, transforming the world around the player into old school video game visuals. So I was expecting something really creative with this, especially when you get to this loading screen, but nope, it's just time trials and horde mode. The DLC also introduces a new weapon form called Surge, some kind of sticky grenade launcher, but to be honest, I never used it. Simply because I feel like Control is the kind of game where you eventually get into a certain flow with your favorite loadout, one that feels comfortable and that gives you control over the various combat encounters. And since the difficulty didn't ask for any change in the way I usually play the game, I kept the same exact loadout. But let's be honest here. The reason why I played this DLC was not for a completely new gameplay experience. I played for the story. I wanted some sort of closure with Alan Wake, or better, a tease of something to come. Does it deliver? Yes, it does. So what do we learn in this new expansion? Let's start from the very beginning. Jessie gets contacted by Alan Wake through the hotline, as if the man knew her, hell, even knows about Polaris. We know that Alan has been stuck in the dark place under Cauldron Lake back in Bright Falls for what I assume is years. But since the hotline seems to be able to connect to all sorts of planes of existence and not just the astral plane and the board, Alan managed to send various messages to Jesse. He's basically calling for help. But the really interesting thing is that we see him writing what is currently happening in the bureau, as if he was writing it into existence. Because remember, Cauldron Lake has the power to turn any form of art into a reality, which begs a lot of questions. The first one being, did Alan actually create the Bureau? Because later on in the DLC, we see him talking about this government agency and how it plays a role in his escape from the dark place. Through multiple pages found in the Bureau, we also learn that Alan wrote a Night Springs episode that featured a governmental organization very similar to the FBC and all this years prior to the Bright Falls events. This could mean that Alan used this whole idea as the base of his new story. As we've seen numerous times, he cannot just write himself out. He has to do it in a way that's narratively meaningful. Things have to be balanced, just like he couldn't just free Alice in the first game. He had to trade places with her. Cauldron Lake doesn't give life to any old scrappy work of art. It seems to have a soft spot for good works of art, ones that make sense. Which is why Alan seems to have tried multiple times to write his escape, but failed. But this time, it looks like things are working out. Alan also realized during his prison time, so to speak, that he needed another hero. Not him, not Thomas Zane, but Jesse. As Wake says, a hero needs a crisis, which would very much fit with Jesse, her brother, and the whole ordinary AWE. He also mentions the need for something special, something to convey an alien force mimicking human intelligence, which would obviously imply the hiss, the thing that we fight throughout the whole bureau. Therefore, Alan could be behind all the events, experience, and control. He would be the conductor who built a world of science fiction so detailed that it would have no choice but to come to life. There's also the possibility that he learned of the Bureau's existence through the hotline somehow and then used it as the starting point of its story, but that seems unlikely, and the Night Springs screenplay pages contradict that. There are still many mysteries left, especially surrounding Thomas Zane and Mr. Scratch. That cutscene really messed with my brain. Additionally, the DLC gives a ton of news regarding a lot of characters from the original Alan Wake. First, let's talk about Dr. Hartman. This one really caught me off guard. If you don't remember, he's the guy who wanted to use Wake's talent as a writer to reshape reality to his liking. We learned that after Alan's disappearance, Hartman jumped into the lake in the hopes of fulfilling his twisted desires, but the darkness transformed him into an awful creature. The Bureau learned of this and brought him into the investigation sector to study him. This is why the darkness is slowly spreading in some of the hallways. Hartman brought it in, but it's much weaker than what we encounter in Alan Wake. When the Hiss invasion occurred, Hartman's body was tainted, again, but by another source of evil this time around, the Hiss. He then became the third thing, a grim looking monster that barely resembles his host. Basically, Hartman is the main bad guy from this DLC, which is really cool and unexpected. 
But the Doctor is not the only character to receive well-deserved news. There's Alice, Alan Wake's wife. At the end of the original game, we see her coming out alive of Cauldron Lake. It's revealed that she's been haunted by dreams, visions, or at least sightings of what I assume is Mr. Scratch, Alan Wake's twisted double. She seems to be seeking answers regarding her husband's disappearance. She even got into contact with the Bureau, but all this also seems like it was written by Wake himself. I'm sure the characters in his story still have some type of freedom of choice and agency, but they do have to meet certain important plot points in order for his story to make sense. The fact that Alan made sure Alice was out of the bureau when things started to go south hints at how Wake acts like a puppeteer, pulling the strings when necessary. Now let's talk about that ending, oh good lord. When that happened, my jaw dropped. Once you finally defeat Hartman in the Bright Falls AWE sector, specifically in front of a replica of Cauldron Lake Lodge, the Bureau receives another AWE alert, coming from Bright Falls, Washington. But the weird thing, and the cool thing, is that it's coming from years into the future, which obviously hints at a sequel. This is exactly what I wanted. Aside from all this, there are tons of new information and revelations that promise a very bright future for the Remedy Connected Universe. Like this paracriminal terrorist organization who seek objects of power for nefarious purposes, or the connection between the Bureau and NASA's space program. Either way, I couldn't be more excited to see what Remedy's next project will be. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed my critique slash story analysis of Control's AWE expansion. If you're not a massive fan of Alan Wake, you might want to skip this one, since it doesn't really give any closure for what happened in Control and because it's really on the short side, like really 3 to 4 hours max. But if you're really into this extended universe remedy is cooking, well, this is for you. If you want to discuss all this, please consider joining the Discord group by following the link in the description. Right now it's only me and a friend of mine, but I truly want to build a From the Attic community. I like to talk about games and I'm tired of only talking to myself. So yeah, you're welcome to join me in this. I'm sure it will be tons of fun down the line. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you later.